Edmund Emil Kemper III, born December 18, 1948, also known as the Coed Butcher or the Coed Killer, is an American serial killer, necrophile and suspected cannibal who committed the abduction and murder of several women in the early 1970s, as well as the murders of both of his paternal grandparents and his mother. Born in California, Kemper had a turbulent childhood. He moved to Montana with his abuse of mother at a young age before returning to California where he murdered his paternal grandparents when he was 15. He was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic prior to his conviction of murder and sentencing to the Atascadero State Hospital as a criminally insane juvenile. Released at the age of 21 after convincing Atascadero psychiatrists he was rehabilitated. Kemper was regarded as innocent and non-threatening by his victims. He solely targeted young female hitchhikers during his killing spree, luring them into his vehicle and driving them to quiet areas where he would murder them before taking their corpses back to his home to be violated and desecrated, with Kemper often keeping the severed heads of his victims for several days before disposal. He then murdered his mother and one of her friends before turning himself into the authorities. He was found sane and guilty at his trial in 1973, and requested the death penalty for his crimes. However, capital punishment was temporarily suspended in California and he instead received eight life sentences. Since then, Kemper has been incarcerated in the California Medical Facility. Kemper is known for his large stature and high intelligence. Standing 6 foot 9 inches tall, weighing over 250 pounds and having a reported IQ of 145, features that left his victims with little chance to overcome him. Early Life Edmund Emil Kemper III was born in Burbank, California on December 18, 1948 to a family of German ancestry. Weighing 13 pounds as a newborn, Kemper was already a head taller than his peers by the age of four. Kemper had a close relationship with his father and was devastated when his parents separated in 1957 and he had to be raised by his mother in Helena, Montana. He had a severely dysfunctional relationship with his mother, Clarnell, a neurotic, domineering alcoholic who would make a habit of belittling, humiliating and verbally abusing him. At the age of 14, Kemper ran away from home in an attempt to reconcile with his father in Van Nuys, Los Angeles. First Murders On August 27, 1964, Kemper's grandmother, Maud Matilda Huggy Kemper, was sitting at the kitchen table working on her latest children's book when she and Kemper had an argument. Enraged by the argument, Kemper stormed off and grabbed the 22 caliber rifle which his grandfather had given him for hunting. He then returned to the kitchen and, when Maud told him not to shoot any birds, fatally shot her in the head before firing twice more into her back. When questioned by authorities, he said that he just wanted to see what it felt like to kill Grandma, and that he killed his grandfather so that he wouldn't have to find out that his wife was dead. Imprisonment at the Atascadero State Hospital, California Youth Authority psychiatrists and social workers strongly disagreed with the court. Psychiatrists' diagnosis, their report stated that Kemper showed no flight of ideas, no interference with thought, no expression of delusions or hallucinations, and no evidence of bizarre thinking. Quote, Kemper endeared himself to his psychiatrists by being a model prisoner and was even trained by the staff to administer psychiatric tests to other prisoners. Release and Time Between Murders If I were to see this patient without having any history available or getting any history from him, I would think that we are dealing with a very well-adjusted young man who had initiative intelligence and who was free of any psychiatric illnesses. It is my opinion that he has made a very excellent response to the years of treatment and 
rehabilitation and I would see no psychiatric reason to consider him to be of any danger to himself or to any member of society. My mother and I started right in on horrendous battles. Just horrible battles. Violent and vicious. I've never been in such a vicious verbal battle with anyone. It would go to fists with a man. But this was my mother and I couldn't stand the thought of my mother and I doing these things. She insisted on it. And just over stupid things. I remember one roof razor was over whether I should have my teeth cleaned. When he had saved enough money, he moved out to live with a friend in Alameda. Here he still complained of being unable to get away from his mother, with her regularly phoning him and paying him surprise visits. The same year he began working for the highway department, Kemper began dating a 16-year-old Turlock High School student to whom he would later become engaged. Later Murders Between May 1972 and April 1973, Kemper embarked on a murder spree that started with two college students and ended with the murders of his mother and her best friend. Kemper would pick up female students who were hitchhiking, and take them to isolated areas where he would shoot, stab, smother or strangle them. He would then take their lifeless bodies back to his home where he would perform a on their severed heads, have sex with their corpses and then dissect and dismember them. Marianne Pass and Anita Lucasa On May 7, 1972, Kemper was driving in Berkeley when he picked up two 18-year-old hitchhiking Fresno State students, Marianne Pass and Anita Mary Lucasa, on the pretext of taking them to Stanford University. Kemper then put both of the women's bodies in the trunk of his Ford Galaxy and returned to his apartment, being stopped on the way by a police officer for a broken taillight but managing not to be detected for his more serious offense. Aikoku On the evening of September 14, 1972, Kemper picked up 15-year-old Korean dance student Aikoku, who had decided to hitchhike to a dance class after missing her bus. Cindy Shaw On January 7, 1973, Kemper, who had now moved back in with his mother, was driving around the Cabrillo College campus when he picked up 18-year-old student Cynthia Ann. Cindy Shaw. He drove to a sequestered wooded area and fatally shot her with a 22 caliber pistol. He then placed her body in the trunk of his car and drove to his mother's house, where he kept her body hidden in a closet in his room overnight. When his mother left for work the next morning, he had sex with and removed the bullet from Shaw's corpse before dismembering and decapitating it in his mother's bathtub. Rosalind Thorpe and Allison Liu On February 5, 1973, after a heated argument with his mother, Kemper left his house in search of possible victims. He again brought his victims back to his mother's house this time by heading them in his car and carrying a headless corpse into his mother's house to have sex with Clarnell Strandberg and Sally Hallett. APPX 5, 15A, M, Saturday. No need for her to suffer any more at the hands of this horrible, murderous butcher. It was quick, asleep, the way I wanted it. Not sloppy and incomplete, gents. Just a lack of time. I got things to do. Kemper then left the scene in Sally Hallett's car, driving eastward, leaving California and through Nevada and Utah. Trial Kemper was indicted on eight counts of first-degree murder on May 7, 1973. Three court-appointed psychiatrists found Kemper to be legally sane. One of the psychiatrists, Dr. Joel Fort, investigated Kemper's juvenile records and the diagnosis that he was once psychotic. He also interviewed Kemper, including under truth serum, and relayed to the court that Kemper had engaged in cannibalism, alleging that Kemper sliced flesh from the legs of his victims then cooked and consumed these strips of flesh in a casserole. 
California used the Monadan standard for sanity which held that for a defendant to establish a defense on the ground of insanity, it must be clearly proved that, at the time of the committing of the act, the party accused was laboring under such a defect of reason, from disease of mind, and not to know the nature and quality of the act he was doing, or if he did know it, that he did not know he was doing what was wrong. Quote, on November 8, 1973, the six-man, six-woman jury convened for five hours before declaring Kemper sane and guilty on all counts. Imprisonment In the California Medical Facility, Kemper was incarcerated in the same prison block as other notorious criminals such as Herbert Mullen and Charles Manson. Kemper showed particular disdain for Mullen, who committed his murders at the same time in Santa Cruz as Kemper. He described Mullen as just a cold-blooded killer, killing everybody he saw for no good reason. Kemper remains among the general prison population and is considered a model prisoner being in charge of scheduling other inmates' appointments with psychiatrists as well as being a skilled craftsman of ceramic cups. While imprisoned, Kemper has participated in a number of interviews, including a segment in the 1982 documentary The Killing of America, as well as an appearance in the 1984 documentary Murder. No apparent motive. Nonetheless, Kemper has continued to display manipulative and potentially threatening behavior. On one occasion, when Douglas colleague Robert Ressler was in a cell alone with Kemper, the then 300 pounds Kemper noticed the apprehension in Ressler after Ressler had pressed a hidden button repeatedly to call a guard to open the cell yet not received a response and told him, relax, they're changing the shift, but remarked, if I went apeshit in here, You'd be in a lot of trouble, wouldn't you? I could screw your head off and place it on the table to greet the guard. Quote. Kemper was eligible for parole in 2007, and again in 2012. On both occasions, he told the parole board he was not fit to return to society and was denied parole. In popular culture, film and literature, Patrick Bateman in American Psycho mistakenly attributes a quote by Kemper to Ed Gain, saying, You know what Ed Gain said about women. He said, When I see a pretty girl walking down the street, I think two things. One part of me wants to take her out, talk to her, be real nice and sweet and treat her right. Kemper was one of five serial killers. Jerry Brudos, Ed Gain, Ted Bundy, Gary M. Heidnick and Kemper who served as an inspiration for the character of Buffalo Bill in Thomas Harris's novel The Silence of the Lambs and its subsequent film adaptation. Like Kemper, Bill begins his criminal life by fatally shooting his grandparents as a teenager. A direct-to-video horror film loosely based on Kemper's murders, titled Kemper, the co-ed killer, was released in 2008. American author Dean Kuntz cited Kemper as an inspiration for character Edgler Vess in his 1996 novel Intensity. French author Marc Dugain published a novel, Avenue des Giants, Avenue of the Giants, about Kemper in 2012. Music American thrash metal band Macabre wrote a track about Kemper, titled, Edmund Kemper Had a Horrible Temper for their Sinister Slaughter album. Armenian-American new metal band System of a Down mentioned Kemper in their unreleased track, Fortress. Australian punk rock band The Celibate Rifles wrote a track about Kemper, titled, Temper Temper Mr. Kemper, for their Turgid Miasma of Existence album. Australian industrial metal band The Berserker wrote a track about Kemper, titled, Forever, for their eponymous album. It has samples taken from the killing of America. Belgian electro-industrial act Suicide Commando also used the same documentary samples on his track, Severed Head, which appears on his album Implements of Hell. German synth-pop duo Seabound have a track on their eponymous album, which examines the psyche of Kemper, titled Murder. J. 
Japanese doom metal band Church of Misery wrote the track, California. Ed Kemper, quote, for their album Master of Brutality. Trivia At the time of Kemper's murders, two other killers, John Lindley Frazier and Herbert Mullen, were also perpetrating their own crimes in the area, resulting in Santa Cruz receiving the ignominious nickname as the murder capital of the world in the press.